I will tell you the story about <coughs> a city guide. Uh, it's not really a startup because I founded the city guide 21 years ago. It's called In Your Pocket, uh, inyourpocket.com. And I want to look at what is the future of printed guidebooks. Uh, just, you know, uh, raise your hand. Has anybody here bought any travel guide recently? Hands up. Four, five, six. Ooh. Everybody else is uh, on iPad. Yeah. Well, <coughs> we'll, we'll look at that. And basically, how can you spot a tourist? Well, traditionally, you would look at the guidebooks they're toting. Uh, this is a, a picture a couple of years old already. Nowadays, what you see more often, of course, are smartphones, <coughs> Androids, iPhones, uh, Windows 8 phones, Blackberries, etc. The only problem, of course, is when you travel, you probably don't have the data plan allowing you to roam freely online. So that's why people are using uh, McDonald's or Starbucks where you can get free, free <laughs> Wi-Fi. And this is the new mode of travel. This had had a profound effect on guidebooks. The US travel guide sales have dropped by almost 40% over the f uh, past five years. Here you have the big publishers from us, DK, Lonely Planet, Fodors, and Avalon, uh, which is publishing the Moon uh, guidebooks and Rick Steve. So you can see there's a drop across the, the sector here. The only one who's, who's you know, limiting a bit the, the, the drop is Lonely Planet. Um, actually, in the UK, the, the picture is the same. In the UK, the sales dropped by 46% over the past seven years. Um, Lonely Planet uh, is quite interesting to look at. Their sales in the US have dropped from 25 million US dollars in 2006 to 18 million in 2012. From us, even worse, from 34 million to 18 million. And I don't know if you know, if you've heard about it, from us. Sorry to interrupt. Is it when you. These are dollar or these are units? Dollar figures. Million dollar figures. <clears throat> I don't know if you've heard about. Uh, uh, um, uh, from us, from us was acquired in August uh, last <coughs> year by Google. So why did Google, the big internet giant, uh, buy a traditional guidebook publisher? Well, actually, it was probably for the content because the content is really, really valuable. Um, so basically, they bought the the entire from us uh, series from Wiley and Sons, the publisher of from us, for an estimated twenty-two million dollars. But just last month, April twenty thirteen, Google pulled the plug on From Us Travel Guide, stopped the presses, and no more From Us Travel Guide uh, will be published with Google, and actually they sold the brand back to its former owner, Arthur From Us, who had started the guide in the, in the 50s, um, who was, interestingly enough, the social media wasn't part of the deal. So the From Us Facebook page, uh, all those fans were taken over uh, by, by Google, and because Google also bought, uh, had bought uh, uh, Zagat's travel, they were <coughs> given to, to Zagat's as well as the 280,000 Twitter followers that Frommer's had uh, on Twitter. They are now all uh, with Zagat's. And Arthur Frommer, and his, you know, he's 85 years old, and his daughter, Pauline, uh, are trying to revive the printed uh, guidebook, which is, in the States at least, it is uh, one of the travel Bibles. Now, who's the culprit? Well, culprits are sites, we've seen some of them, Wiki Voyage. I don't know if you've, uh, you're familiar with Wiki Voyage. It's like Wikipedia. Uh, it's basically the, it will become probably the biggest online user generated <coughs> travel guide. Uh, from <coughs> any city you like, and you can see how, how good or, or bad the, the uh, user generated uh, city guide is. Um, TripAdvisor, of course, among the top 200 websites in the world, uh, people look up their hotels, um, their uh, <coughs> holiday rentals, um, and leave, of course, their comments. Now, I don't know how often have you ever uh, booked a hotel through TripAdvisor? Trip, trip have you read all the 80 comments for a hotel and compared that to another hotel? It is very, very time consuming to wade through all this masses of data. Uh, another example, we've heard it before, Airbnb, the holiday rentals, amazing success story, uh, once again, amazing amount of information. So I believe you still need someone or some help curating this content and you will be paying the, you know, the extra dollar just to get a curated guide. So 
in, as I said, I started the In Your Pocket City Guide in 1992 in Vilnius, Lithuania. Vilnius had just become, the country had just become independent. Uh, this was the first cover with a parting Lenin as the com uh, country uh, was re-establishing its independence. So at that time there was nothing in Vilnius. The telephone book was outdated and there was no information on where to eat, <coughs> where to go out uh, and what to do. Uh, so this became an instant hit and the interesting thing is it was updated every two months because things were changing so fast and they're still being updated every two months. Uh, much more up to date than the traditional uh, print guide book, The Lonely Planets of this world. Well, we went online in 1995 with the entire contents. The entire contents were for free on the uh, In Your Pocket uh, website. And today, this is how the, the website looks like. And the, the, the printed guide here is uh, Ghent in, in Belgium. And all in all, we have 75 In Your Pocket guides in 22 crunt countries with a print run of over 5 million copies. As you can see, it's mainly Central Europe and Eastern Europe. We have guides to places like Tirana uh, in Albania, uh, Pristina in Kosovo, uh, or um, uh, Tbilisi uh, in, in Georgia. And it's really kind of, we're really focusing on uh, uh, Central Europe. And we also have Dublin and Belfast and, uh, and Athens and Amsterdam and Zurich and Vienna, of course. So this is the In Your Pocket Empire over the past years. Now, the book is not only distributed in hotels and bookstores, you know, on at the destination, but it is, of course, online. Um, we have been publishing PDF, full PDF guides that you can download uh, online um, on our website, but also on Script. I don't know if you're familiar with Script. Script is kind of the, the YouTube of documents. So uh, it has great, you know, readers, eye, eye paper where you can embed the, the city guide and, and also download it. Um, and of course, in 2010, like everybody else, uh, we moved onto the iPhone, uh, in your pocket, in your iPhone, with apps for every single city. So luckily enough, uh, we were lucky enough to ha have a strategic investment uh, in, two, uh, in 1999, and we built a content management system with single input, multiple outputs, so we could very, very easily uh, produce guides for um, iPad and other, and, and other uh, platforms. Um, what is interesting also, all our restaurants were geolocated because that's what make, makes really an iPhone uh, app uh, useful with the geolocation here you can see this a, a screenshot shot of the um, iPhone um, bookstore uh, I should say of the, the in your pocket guides and here a screenshot of Zurich and how you can you know surf the different different sections of the book yes please what, what's your business model advertising the business model is traditional advertising and print guides. <laughs> so this hasn't yet been replicated online, but we're working on it. We're working on it very hard. Because what we really need, and you know, we really need social media to help us in our business. Um, we have a Facebook page, not only one page, but we have a page for every single city. For Warsaw, for uh, Ljubljana, for Lviv, because the aim of these pages is not necessarily just for the traveller, but it is to connect the local community, our advertisers, our, um, the people who help us re research the guide. We often conduct polls about you know, what are the latest places in town. So really to offer a local service uh, to, to the, the traveller, because you have to understand in every city we have a physical presence. We don't send in editors to, to go in for a week or two weeks to update uh, the guide. We have a presence in every one of those cities and this is you know really through social media that we're being helped to update uh, these these guides of course we have a twitter presence for in your pocket but also for uh, different cities dispensing travel in from travel advice in 140 characters um, in 2007 we also went on to youtube and have something like 400 films which have been watched five million times short films about the cities about specific attractions um, quite interesting uh, because you, video is just part of any communication uh, mix and, and also of, uh, of guidebooks, so you have uh, city guides. And then something which is really interesting is Foursquare. Um, Foursquare, actually first we thought, well that is a bit of competition because here Foursquare is creating a user-generated travel guide um, where people leave tips, where people put restaurants on the maps, etc., etc. But we have embraced it and set up a branded page on Foursquare, as in your pocket, as the publisher, 
giving tips on specific places and we now have over 13,000 likes on the Foursquare branded uh, in your profit page. So, what are the advantages of the print page, print publications? We did, do insist that we want to have, we want to continue the print publications in every city because people do like it. Now, a couple of advantages. It does not run on batteries. <laughs> that is a major advantage. It's, uh, it has a flexible user interface. <laughs> it's uh, very easy to use. It uh, has an offline navigation system, also called a map. <laughs> it's, uh, it support na supports natural handwriting. You know, if you want to write something down, you know, there you go. It's, uh, it's very, very easy. Um, it can serve as a megaphone. <laughs> It can serve, of course, as a sunshade, or you know, when it rains. Uh, uh, it has a built-in human-powered fan. You know? It's quite hot in here, right? Now. And it is literally unbreakable if you drop it. And lastly, it is almost, almost water-resistant. Yes, you can walk through the rain. So, um, and of course, it can come in quite handy, um, you know, in certain emergencies when you have to rip out a page. Uh, if there's no toilet paper available. <laughs> you can't do that with an iPad or an iPhone. So, how could this product ever disappear? Well, I think um, you get the message. Um, I believe print guides will be here to stay. And as somebody said before, it's another channel. Um, we have dig the digital channels, we have the print channels. And I do believe that we will keep the, dig the, the, the print channels. YouTube, uh, video didn't kill the radio. YouTube did not kill TV. And the smartphone will probably not kill printed city guides. At least, you know, not the, the, the city guides that are up to date. Um, but there is one thing that we will definitely need is expert curated travel content. Uh, is here to stay in any form, be it online, in print, uh, or uh, whatsoever. So it's really the, 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 the expert curated content which is key. Thank you very, very much.